Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to the week ahead. This is Michelle here, and I'm currently in the south of France in uh, Saint Maximin uh, Saint Bon. And this has been probably one of the hardest journeys that I've had to take or chosen to take, initiated myself in, in choosing to leave the comforts of the known and familiar and embark on a pilgrimage for the past week and now entering into the the place of prayer the place of which has been a part of the whole journey from the beginning but it's a challenging thing to face the difficult parts of oneself as they arise when the you know the um the desire is to the opposition and i'll explain a little bit as i go into the chart this week we start with this capricorn moon today and you know i recently taught when we were in paris uh a workshop a day-long workshop and in that i was talking about the cardinal cross as the axis of creation basically here we have cancer capricorn libra aries right cancer ruled by the moon Capricorn ruled by Saturn, Libra ruled by Venus, who's here in Capricorn right now, squaring the nodal axis. It's almost exact right now. And um, Mars ruling the North Node in Aries. And this Venus square to the nodes, you know, with every square, we have the crisis that is orienting us towards our direction, right? Towards our uh, sense of karmic purpose or resolution. In the case of the transiting nodes right now, the resolution node is the south node and it's ruled by Venus and it's in Libra in the fourth house in this particular chart saying here, our commitment to standing in peace and harmony defining our center and balance in the face of uh, suppressed needs and desires. Let's see, that's going to make me want to cry. Um, to doing that in relationship to another without a loss of connection to self. Um and, you know, with Mars also just past its square to the nodes and the moon coming in in this day also to square the nodes, we have a strong pull of energy that says, what do you want? You know, how do you want to do life? Do you want to do life in relationship or do you want to do life alone? Do you want to do life in peace or do you want to do life in separation? Right. That's. The crisis always gives us these two points of orientation. Do we want to be together? How do we want to be if we're together? Or do we want to be alone? And when we're pulling towards separation, there's always going to be the core wound, which is activated. Here we have Chiron with the North Node. We can see so many places around the world where the difference of war and peace is built on these ancient traumas, ancient hurts, collective wounds that have carried on for centuries, right? So these are lifetime ways of suppressing our social needs, our social desires, our identities, our voices, um, in order to be accepted, in order to be loved, in order to be in relationship, in order to be, and then of course, the strong pull to separation, the strong pull brings in the places where we will 
naturally desire to protect ourselves in the face of adversity, in the face of challenge, or even in just the stress, right? The stress of the choice. And the choice is always bottom line perception, right? Venus speaks to our perception. How am I seeing this moment? How am I seeing what's happening right now? What's happening to me? What's happening in me? What's happening outside of me, right? The opposition is self and other. And so we can often see, oh, okay, this is a, a opposing force and this is stressing me and this is challenging me. And yet everything is originating from the inside. So from our own perspective, from our own experience, and even if we're interacting with others, even if we're in relationship to others, we're pulling from these past karmic dynamics. The karmic dynamics, of course, are always coming to the surface because they want to be healed. That's that's the point of the triggers of these past dynamics. There is something unresolved, right, in the uh, uh, evolutionary astrology. The nodes of the moon uh, speak to the the karmic evolutionary cycle that's unfolding in the life of the native. And when a planet squares the nodes, that planet is considered the skip step. So here, the skip step is Venus. And her resolution is through Libra. And this to me speaks to also the tenderness on the other side, the vulnerability of cancer. What do we need in order to feel nourished, in order to feel at home, in order to feel a sense of belonging, in order to feel a sense of peace, in order to feel that we are free, you know, not only to be ourselves, but to have our needs, to have our desires, right? Mars is actively w- moving through Capricorn, seeking to um, untangle us from past ways of using our energy. And that untangling, in a way, that um, deconditioning, I would say, is a better word, liberation, um, is in a way coming through Uranus in these days, this Venus will trine Uranus. She's ruling Uranus. Um, Mars is past the trine to Uranus. There's a, there's a feeling like, oh, we have so much momentum already engaged in a particular direction that that can be the tendency, right? In the past several days, I felt so deeply triggered by different things. And in just in the movement, I could feel the power of the call to separation. Let me be alone. I want to just be alone. Leave me alone. And also, I can feel how that comes with a sense of depression. It comes with a sense of sadness if we're connected to the feeling Even the stress itself comes with a sense of purpose, right? And Mars has to do with our purpose, our desire, our will, and our drive. And I think the purpose in these times is to recognize that the speed of our life, the pace of our uh, liberation is never going to move at the way that we it's going to move in the way that we're conditioned to move until we decondition the way that we're moving with things until that subtle form of awareness that can come in and say oh this is what I'm doing here it is you know and I've had moments in my life where it's like there's self-awareness there it's almost like an object in motion must stay in motion And you can see the object in motion and not be able to stop. Like once a vehicle is already moving in momentum to crash towards something, it's a matter of time. You know, like there's a there's a point in which you can't put the brakes on and not have the car hit the wall. And it's just the consequence of the momentum of motion. But you can certainly repair 
uh, the vehicle after the accident. You can certainly make the, you know, you can make the attempt to break the vehicle. You can pray that the other vehicle doesn't, you know, crash. And um, there's all these different ways of kind of navigating this energy. And ultimately, if we're recognizing that from an emotional perspective, right, Capricorn, emotional self-responsibility, um, we started my monthly new moon ceremonies with the Capricorn moon, and we have been using and looking through the lens of evolutionary astrology, really, at how do we evolve through the emotional body, right? The recognition that I have that all patterns are resolved through the emotional body, and until we actually play the pattern all the way out... Not to say that we have to do the thing or we have to keep mis making the same mistake. It's just that we have to feel the thing all the way through to resolution. And if, you know, if we're taking steps to cultivate a path of feeling, feeling what disturbs us, feeling what shakes us, feeling what stresses us, and not making that thing the other, but making that thing something that we come into contact from the inside. And when we come into contact from the inside to this thing that is disturbing our peace, right? Oh, this is inside of me. Oh, okay, here it is. What is this? How old is this? Where does this come from? What is the what wisdom does this want to give me? You know, where what where in my conditioning have I been taught? to protect myself, to defend myself, to perceive myself as under attack? Where in my childhood have I learned that I cannot be a certain way or I cannot speak a certain way or I cannot, you know, that I have to fight for what I need, that it's not automatically given, right, as a blessing, You know, and if we grew up in families where we weren't able to be heard or um, where basic needs were not met, whether they're, they were emotional needs for vulnerability, for connection, whether they were physical needs for food or um, physical security, whether they were needs for protection whatever the need was that went un, un, unfulfilled, unrequited, you know, whether it was the love of a parent or a feeling of security, these are the things that we are going to reach for through the square, right? We're going to reach for the things that bring a sense of joy, uh, connection, love. And there's so much, you could see, look at the chart, so much energy pulling on this side of the chart. So much energy. We've got Ceres in Capricorn, uh, Lilith and Pallas Athene in um, Sagittarius, ruled by this Jupiter here, uh, with Uranus in Taurus. We have Juno retrograde here in Virgo, and this is Hecate and Diana. But for the most part, all of the outer planets, we would say, are on this side of the chart. And most of the personal planets, the moon, Venus, Mars, Pluto, Mercury is now in the sign of Aquarius, the sun, this is Chariclo, and um, this is Circe. And Saturn, this Hygieia, the goddess of health and well-being. She's been moving through Pisces. And Neptune with Chiron on the north node with Eris. You know, we have a strong directional pull that moves from the cardinal axis of Capricorn all the way through to the square to Aries. That's very strong initiatory energy, right? It's initiating us towards what? Well, we're in a Baslamic moon that's closing its cycle 
Um, it's the first closing cycle uh, since that final Capricorn new moon where Pluto was in Capricorn. And we have now the preparation, the dark time of the moon for the new moon in Aquarius. And this new moon in Aquarius is the first marking of a new beginning that's happening in this particular time. And if you watch this moon, it's, um, let's see, I don't know what time it is. I'll be doing my new moon ceremony on Friday evening from France. It'll be, um, I think, 10 o'clock Pacific time, uh, 7 o'clock French time. And we have this new moon at 20 degrees Aquarius. If you remember in the astrology from the past years, when Saturn was in Aquarius squaring the nodes, it was at this 20 degrees as well. And here we have, it's not, um, it's just past the trine to the south node. And it's... It's a new moon that essentially stands on its own in a way. It's square to Uranus and in modern astrology ruled by that Uranus. So there's a strong individuality and collectivism that is being activated saying, okay, here we are. New or you know, I hear this statement all the time, a new earth, the age of Aquarius. But what does that mean when we're thinking about how humanity lives together how do we navigate our relational axis right which is that libra aries self and other how do we navigate the collective axis the social identities and the individual identities right leo aquarius i think of as very much relating to the identity and where do we find ourselves often in the sign of aquarius i find there's a deep sense of not belonging right? Except to the one place where we can belong, which is to humanity, right? No matter the diversity of species and plant matter and human beings and, you know, all the different people and all the different countries, right? That would be the Sagittarius, Gemini um, axis, all the different organized religions and all the different thought systems in Aquarius, there's just the, the people, you know, and the people are either individuals and expressing as individuals, or they are a part of a collective. And a part of what I created with this program rebirth throughout the year is the, a component of that. And you can also join this on its own. My group growing together and the intention with growing together is really to come together as a collective of astrologers astrology students counselors guides teachers healers people who are a part of the collective field of healing and for us to lean into the evolutionary journey as a group this is another reason why i do most of my work in group small group fields you have full permission in my groups to be yourself to come as you are to speak if you feel like speaking to be off camera if you feel like being off camera to participate how you feel called to to express your voice to share who you are to be a part of a community of people who are dedicated to healing to learning to using astrology as a tool for healing and then to becoming more and more authentic in who we are and who we truly are, right? And who we truly are is beyond the conditioning that we have been given from birth, from society. It's beyond the structures and the forms, right? It is the unknown because it's so much of who we are actually is what is revealed to us about ourselves in the absence of identity, that's why Rebirth is the program for this year, because as we're stripping away parts of ourselves that have not served us for decades, maybe, 
there is a field of unknown possibility that exists where we actually don't have an identity of who we are. We can't say, oh, I'm this and I'm that, you know, I'm doing this with myself. I'm doing that, right? But if we are in a field of collective purpose of becoming as truly and deeply authentically connected to our own soul and to the journey of the soul, to the healing that that journey evokes and to the desires that are drawing the soul. This is a part of what I started to unpack for the first time in my workshop in Paris because this axis of desire and longing of resistance and cooperation where we are relative to the Pluto desires and where we resist our own evolutionary journey is a part of where we're learning to become free of identity in order to become who we truly are meant to be. And that's a vulnerable condition to be unsure of ourselves, unsure of our direction, unsure of what the guidance says, unsure of what's happening in our relationships, unsure of who we, who we are. To be other than to know that we are meant to love, you know, that's the highest calling that a human being can answer is the call to love, is the call to experience the heart. And that call often comes in ways that are non-linear, right? Or seem to be coming from opposing views or fighting or conflict, right? Conflict seems to breed the opposite of that, which is the desire to separate, right? That's on that resistance cooperation spectrum. The desire to separate can be strong. And I know for myself, I felt that. I don't quite know how to overcome that feeling other than to recognize it when it's there and to be aware of its consequence. But this time, this new moon is an, a rare opportunity for a reconnection to a mysterious aspect of our own being that is yet to be revealed. And then in the days after Saturday uh, into Sunday, you know, this is the last week that we'll see with this Venus and Mars here at the end of Capricorn. Um, First, Mars will enter Aquarius on February 14th on Valentine's Day. And Venus then will um, enter a few days later so on the 17th. Uh, it might be the 16th in the U.S. Um, so there's quite a lot of shift moving in that direction of Aquarius. We'll see... More and more, the chart will be occupied in this part of, you know, at least until uh, the end of February. If you listen, I did a rebirth walk ahead for the month of February, which you can watch also on this YouTube channel. The shift allows us, I think, an opportunity for a new beginning in this unknown space of possibility and yet that might come with the discomfort of that dissolving process it might come with the need to perceive ideas that are foreign and open our mind to alternate possible alternate realities really maybe realities that we're not yet established in or ways of thinking or being that we haven't quite, um, you know, it's like when an idea from the future 
there's a quote from the Course in Miracle, uh, an idea grows as it is shared, right? Things that seem to be future or modern ideas, once they catch within a social context, they have the power to change the whole world very quickly, right? We can see revolution and evolution come through the mind that is open to new ideas and it can happen very quickly that that changes everything so you know i would invite you in this week to be prepared for the beginnings that are wanting to come and i'll read to you this is from hexagram three in the I Ching, sprouting um, this is from Hillary Barrett's translation. What is beginning? What is growing in the center? And where can you help it? Right from your own center, sprouting from the source, creating success. Constancy bears fruit. Don't use this to have a direction to go, fruitful to establish feudal lords. Sprouting is the very beginning, a growing center, putting out our roots into the unknown and breaking through into hard soil. The inner life reaches out into the world, experiencing resistance for the first time. The creative drive of heaven and earth joins together and grows. It's tiny, scarcely born, but burgeoning with life and a great desire to attain full growth. It's far too early yet to narrow all the possibilities down to a single direction. Just as a plant sends out its roots in all directions, a new ruler needs to set up a network of feudal lords. There are. This is an image for helpers, human or otherwise, that bring you everything that you need to expand your sphere of awareness and influence. In exploring all possibilities, you enrich and strengthen the center as growth begins. Right, We can't know, especially in those early days in the first light of a new moon, what is really beginning, what is really beginning to take shape in our lives. But we can establish our roots from the center of our source. And that phrase, which is my favorite phrase on earth, um, from the I Ching at least, constancy bears fruit, Right, which means to stay with it to stay with your path, your purpose, your journey, your process, to trust that process, to continue to reveal to you what it is that is not working, worn out, limited, what crisis is causing you to, um, from the source, find something within that is just taking shape, just taking root, and allow that to expand. So with that, my friends, I hope that you'll join me. My monthly new moon ceremony is available to register for. You can find details on joining the Evolution Moon um, Circle in the link below uh, the description box. If you want to join me and you're needing support to do so, you can use the coupon code self love to join me freely. And I hope that you will, on this journey, find your way. And if I can be of support to you in any way, shape, or form, I'm booking sessions for after my return for my pilgrimage. You can find all the booking information on my website as well. Um, blessed new moon to you in this time. Releasing that which doesn't serve always gives way to that which wants to emerge. Thank you, my friends. Bye for now.